Right, this is a mixture of raw sienna and water in a very dilute mix. And this is for the sunlit area of cloud. Now gently put that on. You see the way I'm going there? Mm -hmm. Not in a, in a uniform way, right. but just nice and free flowing to give that dab. open sky area. Keep it towards the bottom more than the top. The sky recedes as it goes towards the horizon. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's gonna be getting lighter. A bit more in this area. Now we're gonna put in some warmth. And this is with crimson and ultramarine in a very reddish purple. And try and keep this to the underside. <laughs> It looks like it'll be completely wrong, but as yeah, it goes down, go. you see it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Off you go. Now, watch. Keep it on the underside, just cradling the bottom of the clouds and All moving right. over to the right. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Now we must put on some blue sky. I'm just going to blend that out like that. The blue sky is cerulean blue with a touch of crimson. And this is where we shape the clouds. Look. We give the clouds shape. We're shaping the top of the clouds. Off mm -hmm. you go. Move across nice and gently. We don't have to rub the paper very hard. Keep it, you see the yes, way you're zigzagging? Uh, yes, yes, Pull absolutely. it more like that. Yeah, uh -huh. That's fine. Right across. Now we're going to a darker blue. Mm -hmm. And this is ultramarine with a touch of light red. There we are. This is a real artistic license, you know, there's no blue out there <laughs> at all. Well, we can make blue if we want it. Here you go, pull that across the top now. Uh -huh. I'll just show you, lean very, very lightly and pull down here and there right, and go back you. up again. Uh -huh. That's going to give us the cloud shapes. Now let's put some more colour in there. It's a wee bit dull at the moment. So I'm using light red with crimson and some ultramarine. Now this is to give some darker cloud shadows. Now this will look a bit strong at the beginning, look. Just try that. Very light. Uh, and, and then sort keep of... It, keep it broken and then come up in shape. You know, keep it yeah. irregular. Right. And fill out this area here, this area of white, that's it. Now, let's take the excess paint off the brush and we just squeeze it between our finger and thumb. Mm -hmm. And then we can soften those areas there. Look. <laughs> just try that. You only have to touch it like a real feather, you know, not too deep at all, that's it. Now I must say, no, the sky has worked out very mm. well. Now that that's dry, we're going to move down and put in some of this foreground area. Now we're going to do that in three stages. The first stage is by putting on a very weak wash of winter yellow and winter blue and just pull that across. There mm -hmm. you go. To where? I'll guide you with the pencil here. Just mm -hmm. take it right across that horizon line. Mm -hmm. One stroke the whole way across. And the lighter you lean on the paper, the more the paint will disperse. That's it. Now come along again, just to the, to the edge of water's the edge. Yes, and it's very important that you cut that off quite neat. Come right across mm -hmm. to here. That's lovely. So kind of when, the, when the brush is in front of you, it's knowing where to stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's all we need to do with that brush. We're going now to the number eight brush. And this is for the dark green. You can see that there are a lot of varying colors out there. We have dark greens, light greens. Now, just with the point of this brush, and this is a mixture of winter yellow and French ultramarine. Pull that across, just barely touching the paper. Just move quickly, stop, and then start again. You see the way it it's bleeds? It's fantastic. The, way it yeah. goes the grass is growing. Yeah. Now a little bit, lift the brush. Do about an inch at a time. <laughs> right. And come right across to the path sage. And you can see that there's some heather out there. Mm -hmm. And that's a purplish colour. Mm. And the same technique, leaving some light green. And then we come across with that. Just very, very lightly. That's it. Again, when I do it, it looks too regular. It looks good to me. We'll put a dark line along the bottom as well, so into the winter yellow with some ultramarine. And just come along the edge of the, the water in the same way. That's it. And that gives you the layered effect that we have whenever That's you look at it. So. Well, that's most of the grassy area in, and you can see how those colours have bled mm. together to give us the impression of the scene that we're looking at. Now we've put in the roadway as well. That was just a mixture of raw sienna and water, and then bleeding in some crimson and ultramarine, just to give that shadowed texture effect. 
and then a little bit of ultramarine and Windsor yellow to give that green effect along the edges of the pan. Mm. We're going to move on now and put in this water, the watering hole. And that's nothing more than a mixture of ultramarine with a little bit of light red and the three quarter inch flat brush. And it's just going to be a couple of horizontal lines coming across. Leaning lightly on the paper, the paint will disperse more easily. Now can you see at the back of the water hole, there's, uh, there's some shadows or mm. reflections of the, of, of the bank. Yeah. We're going to put that in now. Just while that's still damp, mixing up Windsor yellow with some Windsor blue and a bit of light red. This is just to give me a rough green colour. Just a darkish green. You need to mix this quickly because that's drying all the time. Fast. Like a few vertical strokes coming down. Just wet that off slightly. Just try that. Mm -hmm. Touch the chisel edge of the brush flat against the bank. No, mm -hmm. no, hold it, tilt the brush that way. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple of vertical strokes coming down. That's it. Keep it right along the water's edge. There'll be no break, but some longer than others. Now you see, you'll have a dark line coming along there because that is green from the reflected bank above. Now you see how quickly that's drying. Yeah. You just pull that in a vertical line to indicate some grass is growing above the bank. Well now you can see how those distant hills now has brought the painting yeah, forward. Yeah, we really now have a foreground, a middle ground, a background. Yeah. yeah. Well that was the whole idea of mm -hmm. bluing this. That takes us now to the trees. This is just a mixture of raw sienna and water. And using the number eight brush, we just paint that on over the whole tree. Mm. Being careful to stay, for my purposes, within the lines, of course. Very much so, because yeah. we're going to bleed a darker side into the trees. Right. And if we have come out over the lines, then the tree's going to get very bulky at the bottom. And I paint it all the way up? All the way up, as far as here, say, where the tree starts to narrow. Because if you look out there, you can see that the tree is light against the dark background, mm -hmm. but it's dark against the light sky. Yes. For the shadowed side of the big tree, we're going to mix uh, ultramarine and light red. And if you just leave that for a mm -hmm. moment. This is drying all the time, and yes. I think it would just be about the right stage of dryness now to feed this in. Look. Oh, look. Now, and coming up that side, you see what's happening? Yeah. It's going right across but it's still keeping one dry side. Just use that brush and keep it all the way up. Very much to the, the right hand side. Just touching on, no, right on the line, keep it right on the line, otherwise it'll spread right across. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But as you go up, it's dark against light. There's only this little tree left, so try and get that shape as near to the sketch as possible. Huh. Now you're right to be cautious there and yeah. not touch it too heavily. It's very nerve-wracking, this. You know. It is, yes, but because it's always, it's always you're always afraid of putting too much on, yeah. aren't you? That's the. You better hurry up. The train's coming. Oh, quick! <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Yeah. Now you see for that definite shape at the top. Just yeah. have that there for a second. If you put a little bit more pressure on the brush there. Right. It'll give you that yes. top shape. So it doesn't matter if you go half a no, no, millimetre over it. Not at all. Yeah. Now, I'll give you some dark colour yeah. here. And just feed this in on the underside of the foliage. Just more or less. That's enough. It'll spread through itself. But it's the two-tone from the light green to the dark green that gives you the definition in the tree. Now, we'll move on here. Mm. I know we don't have a shadow across the path, but we have the light on the left-hand side yeah. of the tree. So I'm going to put a shadow across there just to give a wee bit of impact to the bottom left hand side. And this is a mixture of uh, ultramarine and light red. And ultramarine and light red give you a beautiful bluish tone. And you see what I'm doing there? Just breaking that mm. up and down over mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. And coming across the path. And then we can just put a few bits of darkness there. And then, looking at that, all you'll have to do is a few more little bits of figuring around the branches on the tree. Mm. But really, there'll be nothing left mm. to do, only sign it. The thing that strikes me is that it's an 
unprepossessing view. If you're walking along this path, you wouldn't necessarily stop to look at it. But when, when you've captured it like this, there's an awful lot of interest in it, yeah. isn't there? But isn't that the thing? You know, most people go out to paint mm. and they walk around all day and they can't find a subject. When really all they have to do is stop where they are, looking in four directions, you can get four paintings. So don't overcomplicate the thing. Try and simplify the scene as much as possible. And I think you've done a great job. Well, thank you very much. Couldn't have done it without you.